Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial. It's amazing to have you here. This is a very, very beginner's creative coding tutorial. I will show you the very fundamentals of processing, but with a specific idea in mind. So basically the question behind this thing is how would the teachings of the Bauhaus look today if we wouldn't have machines, but instead we would have software. And this is kind of, or this is a piece of my answer to this huge question. Uh, I also developing at the moment, I'm developing a course on, uh, you know, on the pre preliminary course of at the Bauhaus, which was kind of the thinking workshop of the Bauhaus. And I try to adapt these concepts to creative coding. And the course I'm working on at the moment is called Bauhaus Coding Workshop. And it just, you know, it's just putting all of these ideas that I have while researching the fundamental design principles and the fundamental teachings of Johannes Itten and Laszlo Mohori Notch and Josef Albers. Uh, and I just put everything into this course. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of work, but you probably know that I really enjoy what I do. So this is not too bad. <laughs> cool. Um, let's talk about processing. So as I said, we will work with processing and processing is basically a free software. It's a code editor, right? So you can download it on this website, processing.org here in the download section. And it's basically a program, which is kind of a text editor, which understands processing code. So it's free, it's open source. You can download it. It works on Linux, Mac and Windows. That's awesome. And it is, uh, you know, it's, it's the perfect software to get started with programming. Believe me, I have a lot of experience in that. I really tried so many different solutions. And for me, processing is the most powerful solution. So if you want to dive into process, uh, into programming, processing is a very, very good pick. So just click onto your, you know, onto the link here and download the version for your Mac, for your uh, <laughs> operating system. And there you go then. Now this is processing. It's, it's as I said, it's a, just a text editor, right? You write your processing code in there. And uh, as you can see, there's a button on the top left there, which says play. And this play button just launches the code, right? It just, you know, executes the code and just creates this visual. Mostly uh, the output of processing is visual. So we have some kind of something like a canvas there, something like a, we call this sketch window in the future. And um, you can immediately see what your code does, right? Super simple, super easy to learn um, and very enjoyable. This is the visual we are going to create in this tutorial video. It's very, very simple. Um, and we will really start from, from scratch. And what you see here, there's an ellipse and a triangle and a square on the, on the, on the video, on the sketch window here. And the ellipse and the square are just um, moving in opposite directions, right? So everything is just, you know, animated through a sine wave. So we will create a sine wave to animate these shapes. It's very simple. I think we will need about hopefully not more than eight minutes. And uh, yeah, and probably this is a very condensed and, you know, dense tutorial to teach you everything. So time is already running. So let's just quit that window or just close that window and just dive into the processing editor. Here we go. We always start with setup and draw. And inside of setup, we can define the size of the sketch. And in this case, I would say 900 times 900 is a great size. So I also have to create the draw function. By the way, you can read everything on the website. Uh, we, you're probably on this website now. Maybe you are not because you're coming from YouTube or anywhere else. However, there's a blog post with all the code snippets, all the text. So you can, re can really go through it uh, section by section and take it at your own pace. All right, cool. Inside of the draw, uh, well, basically the, 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 the setup function is where we write the settings for, for our sketch and the draw function is where we just write the code that defines what happens over time. That means the animation, we describe what should happen, right? The first line in a draw loop should always be the background function. And in this case, I put a zero into these parentheses to tell the background function to draw a or to paint a black background. Cool. Um, now, before we draw our shapes onto the sketch window, I will, define, I will define how they shall look. So what I do is I just set the stroke color to F1, F1, F1. It's basically, basically a very light 
gray or a very dark white, however you want to, <laughs> whatever you prefer. So, um, and I will set the stroke weight to four pixels because I want to have a wireframe like um, aesthetic, right? So then I say, or I define that the shapes should not be filled they shall be transparent and that can be achieved with the no fill function right so stroke defines the color stroke weight defines the thickness of the stroke and no fill defines the transparency of the shapes cool so um now i can start adding some shapes onto the sketch window uh, by the way let's just check what happens if i hit the run button that's at the top left here of the sketch window uh, sorry of the processing editor so here's the sketch window we have a black sketch window that's what we defined here and we just told the sketch that everything that follows should be should have a specific color or the stroke should be a, have a specific color and the stroke should have a specific uh, thickness right so everything that follows will have these you know these design rules so let's start with a ellipse and I tell this ellipse to be in the center of the sketch window. So the ellipse function takes four parameters, right? And it, the first, first two parameters are the X and the Y position of the sketch, or sorry, of the ellipse. So um, if I set them to, to 450, they are really in the center of the sketch window. So and I would like to have the diameter of the ellipse to be, let's say, 800. There we go. We've got an ellipse and a sketch window. It's very nice. Let's just decrease the, the size to 700. All right. So the next shape I want to put onto the sketch window is a rectangle, right? And the rectangle is also very, very easy to, um, to uh, or a square, right? Square is very, very easy to put onto the sketch window. I can simply um, just duplicate that function and just put a rect um, or change the, the name of the function to rect instead of ellipse. This will work because the rect function expects exactly the same uh, parameters than the ellipse function. The problem here is that processing normally centers rectangles at the top left of the rectangle. And that can be changed by using the rect mode function. Okay, and now we have the ellipse and the rectangle on the sketch window which is perfect. Now we have to create the triangle and put it onto the sketch window. But, you know, creating triangles is not super easy. It's really, you know, a hassle just in the beginning. So let me just create the code for it and then I'm going to explain what is happening there. Now, here we go. I just created a triangle on the sketch window. Basically, let's go to, through this line by line, so um, hopefully we'll understand something. It's not super easy, but it's also not super hard. Um, it's just something you have to get used to uh, through working with those functions. So the first functions I just created here is a push matrix, or we could also just call it push. Um, the push matrix function is just opening a new matrix, right? An independent matrix. And inside of the push and pop matrix functions, we have basically the code that defines what happens in this matrix. And the translate function uh, with the arguments width divided by two or height divided by two just translates everything to the center of the sketch window, right? So width divided by, by two is um, 450 and height divided by two is 450 as well. So this is basically the same, right? And um, a triangle has three vectors and three points. So the first point, it has a X and a Y value as well as the second and the third point. And the triangle function works a little bit different than the rect and the ellipse function. It just takes all of these points and then draws the rectangle onto the screen. So this is the code or these are the three vectors that I define um, to position these points to the sketch window. You know, just dive into that later. Um, 
but now we have this nice visual he here and the question is how do we get it animated right that's very 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 important so how can we animate these shapes well we can create a wave um, and there are some nice functions for that in processing and make that wave you know going from the left from maybe minus 450 to, to plus 450 or something. That would be awesome because then we could take that wave value and add it to the X position of the rectangle and subtract it from the X position of the ellipse function, uh, of the X position of the ellipse. All right, so we could create a wave variable, which is a, should be a float equals to map um, no. scene frame count times 0 0.05 times 450 and we could add this to the x position of the ellipse and we could subtract this from the x position of the rectangle and let's see what happens there we go right so i just created a wave in this function in this line here right which um, oscillates between minus 450 and 450 and I just add these waves to the x positions or the x position of the ellipse function and I just subtract this wave from the x position of the rect function and that's how I just create this graphic um, I, I think that's it for now, right? So you can really go through every line of code in the uh, in the in the tutorial or in the blog post to understand everything in detail. Um, I want to say thank you very much to Sharing Bowers for making this possible, to supporting me creating this tutorial, and it's awesome. Uh, if you send me your questions and your recommendations to make this tutorial better, peace out. Thank you very much. See ya.